Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create an FPS battle horde game in Unity and welcome to episode 12. In this tutorial we're going to focus a little bit more on some UI, make it animated and link it together with our ammo drop. Don't forget, click subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial still to come this series and everything else on game development on my channel. If you've enjoyed this series so far, please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships so we'll earn things like early access, exclusive content, project files and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So up until now the only real UI elements that we have dealt with is this down here and that's our ammo and we know how to link it from a script to the UI itself but we're not going to do that this time. We're going to create a, a little animation on some UI that says at the top um, something like ammo dropping. So let's go to game object, let's go to UI and let's go text. Uh, let's double click on the text so we can see it a little better. Zoom out. And let's just put ammo dropping. And I think what we might end up doing at some point is uh, playing with fonts as well, adding new fonts in. For now, let's just get the animation working. Um, let's have the alignment center and center. Change it to, well, I guess any color you want. Let's have it a yellowy color-ish, just so as it isn't white, just like our ammo down here. So I'm gonna make it a lot bigger. So let's say 50, for example. And let's use our rect tool up here, and we can resize this UI element. So we can drag like that. And I might set it as bold as well, and set it in the middle. You can see all I'm doing here is just moving it with a rect tool and just aligning it, snapping it like so. And in the game view, it currently looks like that. Not fantastic, I know. Obviously, further in development, things look better and better as they go along because we change things, make them look even better. What I'm going to do this is I'm going to make this flash from the yellow it is now. Uh, so I'm going to copy that hexadecimal code because that will come in handy later on. And we're basically going to make it flash. In fact, should we make it flash between white and yellow? Yeah, let's do that just to give it a bit more variance in how it looks. So let's have it start completely white. And let's go to our animations folder. And let's right click, create folder, UI. And in here, any UI elements which have animations will be inside here. So let's start by having ammo dropping. Uh, yeah, so we've got it white. Uh, we have the rotation all set as zero. And yeah, we're ready to start this animation. So uh, my animation tab is up here for some reason. I'm going to drag it down here next to the profiler. And let's click on, make sure we are on text here. And actually, let's rename that before we go any further. Let's rename this to drop UI. And let's click on create and drop UI anim and save. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to be rather clever in how we use this. We're going to constantly loop the animation. But via scripting, we're going to turn the animation, or rather the whole object, off. And then on again whenever ammo is dropping for maybe a couple of seconds. So let's press the record button. And again, much in the same way as we did with our pistol, the same principles work here when creating the animation. So let's start with our very first keyframe. The very first keyframe, we want the color to be completely white. So let's set that color as white once again. FFFFF in hexadecimal. Rotation, I'm going to set as one and then back to zero. Again, one, zero, one, zero. This basically ensures that we do have the keyframe set how we want it to be. So let's move this along. After 60 frames, let's have the rotation on the X. Uh, let's set this as 40. Now, it may look a bit odd at the moment, but don't worry about it because when you see UI, it's always in the second dimension, not three dimensional. We can see it three dimensional in the scene view, 
but people won't be able to see it um, in their two-dimensional view. So keeping it 40 means that we can make it look a little bit cooler a little later on. Anyway, after this, we need to set this to completely yellow. So let's do that. And that looks okay as it is. So FFF 900, completely yellow. And then after another 60 frames, let's reset everything back to how it was. So 60, uh, we need 120 now because that's 60 frames ahead. Let's set this back to white and set the rotation back to zero. And let's press the record button again to stop it. So it's a two second animation and it's pretty simple. Uh, just make sure that it is ticked as loop time up here. And I'm gonna press play and see how it looks. Okay, I think that's completely fine. That should do the trick. So what we need to do now is we need to modify our script to make sure that this ammo dropping sequence appears on our screen whenever ammo is dropping. So I'm going to go to ammo text and turn it off up here. And we need to go to our scripts. And I think it's in, it's not global, is it? it's weapons, isn't it? And it's a random drop. So let's head into our random drop script. And on here, what we're going to do is we're going to modify this just a little more. So although we have 20 seconds here, we realistically need to split that just a little more per se. You'll see, you'll see how all this works um, in a moment anyway. Firstly, let's set a variable for that new object. Public, game object, ammo, drop, UI, semicolon. And obviously by default, it is turned off. So that means that whenever we start dropping here, we now need to put uh, ammo drop UI dot set active true semicolon. So this means that it is now going to be permanently on now. The way this is going to work is after 20 seconds, we're going to restart again, but it's up to you how you want this to work. What I would recommend is below, we put yield, return, new, wait for seconds. And then I'm just going to put four in there just as a sample number. Now, what this does mean is after the first drop, it will be 20 seconds until that first drop. Then it'll be 24 every subsequent drop. What you can do is reduce this to 16 if you want, or you could just keep it as four, keep it the way it is right now. It's not gonna change too much. We're still gonna see a drop every, in this case, 24 seconds. So save, head back into Unity, wait for it to compile. There we go. Let's go to our globals. And let's apply ammo drop UI right there. And I've lost it. There it is. And now let's press play. Oh, one thing I did um, just realize we have actually forgotten to turn it off. <laughs> Although we waited for it here, we haven't set it off. So let's copy this line of code, place it below, change it to false, resave it back into Unity. Let it compile. And do you know what? I have actually put the wrong ones on. So let's put, make sure ammo text is back on. Made a bit of a boo boo there. It is drop UI we're using, isn't it? So that's off. Ammo is on. Let's press play. So after 20 seconds, we should see that ammo dropping appear on our screen for just four seconds and then it will disappear and the whole sequence will restart. Hopefully, there we go. So that has dropped somewhere. There it is behind us. So in another couple of seconds, we should see it happen once again. 
And it's coming any second now. Come on. There we go. Ammo dropping. Oh, and there it is right in front of us. Cool. So that all works. Excellent. I'm quite happy with that. So next time what we're going to do is we're going to work with some more UI once again. Uh, probably fading in maybe. Uh, tidy a couple of things up. And also add in some background music to make things come alive just a little bit more. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching, guys.